just having a little moment. Are you? Yeah, just... Because sometimes I don't know what to say, you know. <laughs> no, I'm saying that seriously, so... You know what? British lace and green is my favourite colour, if you're stuck with that. <laughs> I think we had that last time, didn't we? <laughs> No, the, you know, this, this, the, the tin left thing, it, it's sort of evolved to a thing where I don't do any research at all. Yeah. I don't think of any questions. And so occasionally I'm I kind of, I'm, I, yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Uh, it's going well, Chris, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> They're still with us. Yeah, there's people are still, not many people Maybe have left. Open up to somebody up there looking like, I'm not sure what's going to happen next. Maybe. Oh, somebody there's gone. <laughs> They're going to the toilet. Oh, that's, that's okay, they'll be back. So often, you know, that I'll find myself just having a little moment. <laughs> it's like two bewildered old men on the park bench. You know, so. <laughs> I think that's pretty. I think that's a pretty reasonable <laughs> observation. I'm fairly bewildered. <laughs> no, I. I the price of mint. Yeah. <laughs> Mints or mince or both. <laughs> It's shocking, I think. No, I, I, I love it. I, you know, I love that fact of, of when you stop caring. Not necessarily well, caring. Stop, yeah, stop. That, it makes it sound flippant. It's just more like overthinking things. It's a bit like I said, working to briefs. Or I find it really hard, hard to do that if someone says, you know, do this. Or I think to myself, I, mean, I need to, to create. I think very much to Oh, thank I need, you. you know, I need to, I need to be a part of this, the electro clash of zeitgeist. I need to get myself a Hoxton Finn. You know, <laughs> Did you ever have a Hoxton Finn? It's a bit difficult, really. Um, you know, sometimes you ch chasing the, it's it just not the right thing to do. You know, mm. be trying to do something you're happy with is, is mm. more important. I think, Absolutely. and I think, yeah, it shows. Yeah. Mm. Samuel Beckett. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> what are you down to? <laughs> Today. <laughs> Referencing. Oh. Yeah. I, I saw some clients. Maybe more. The fake sold some clothes. So, no, sold, saw some clients. Oh, not sold some clothes. No. Sold them some clothes. <laughs> sold them some clothes. <laughs> that's no, that's age for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh. No, but I think when you when you do stop caring, I think you find a purity that that isn't there when you train really, really hard. Uh, or when you're trying under, under an assumed set of rules. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, when, I, when, when Acid House started, there weren't, it was all kind of year zero stuff and people just doing, no one really knew what, there was no such thing as DJ culture, there was no such thing as making a living out of being a professional DJ or make, you know, none, none of the things you, you, you see now was all chaotic, you know. Um, uh, what's my point? It's all, it's, uh, uh, well, what, oh, yeah, so, so I up, when I started making music, it was, it was just really like, I like house music, I, I like reggae, I'm going to try and s stick these two things together because no one told, you know, it seemed like a possibility, mm. seemed like something you could do. Um, so I had a crack at it. Um, and now I, I don't, I, I like, you know, this, hopefully that's the kind of spirit of things that mm -hmm. I'm trying to do now is obviously, you know, just... Because what happened to you is, is, is pretty amazing, really. You couldn't play, I mean, by your own admission, you couldn't play an instrument, and yet you got signed to a major recording deal. That's, that's, <clears throat> that's brilliant. Yeah, well, that was the 90s for you. Everyone was on drugs. <laughs> they were. I mean, no, no one made a rational decision for like three or four years. At all. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got signed to um, Deconstruction Records, and I think I'd done like... Well, the first remix of that I'd never been in a studio before. I know, I love that. Um, but that was working at Eastern Block. It's a low-budget operation. 
somebody's cheering. Yes. yes. Oh, there's Chapman over there. For yes. So the, the, uh, was John Feast and Lot, they had a, they had a band sign to call their Mad Jacks. Mm. And they wanted a remix doing. And I just said, I'll do it. And I'd never been in the studio before. I had no, absolutely no idea what I was doing at all. Apart from I knew how I wanted it to sound. So. Mm. And it ended up, it ended up very well. So. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, again, it was just, but there wasn't like a, a, I find it strange nowadays that you get things like DJ schools. I find it a strange thing because it wasn't something you could learn when I started doing it. It was just something that strange, lonely boys did, you know. Still is. <laughs> 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 It was hard to sort of learn it, you know. I don't, I, I, now I think, you know, it's, it's now this sort of people sort of, you know, people's lives seem to be, there's like paths you can take and ways, and, mm. and which is probably a good thing, really, you know, mm. enabling people to do stuff, which I think is probably all very good, but um, I, I just bumbled through, really. Mm. We had Viv Albertini here not so long ago, and, and she, she said a similar thing. She talked about when she was at art school in the mid 70s, which of course, you know, it's a different time, but talked about this whole thing of she now gets invited in as a as a guest speaker and she's saying even, even in art schools on on the courses people have an absolutely mapped out career plan hmm. it's so different to to when it's we admirable were, yeah. i'm just indecisive that's the yeah. problem oh is it? yeah no but no but i don't think you, you know from but you know you were saying we do get people who are really like driven and they have a vision and I think that's very um that that's a very admirable trait I think people mm. really decide what they want to do and they're kind of very focused and they can create amazing things just by being so, I mean I always quite admire musical purists like who like one sort of music I think that's really something really cool like I can't do it but I just mm. think there's something admirable about the kind of focus it's just jealousy because like, I can't focus on anything mm. at all um, so, were you lucky then, or, or were you actually creating, you know, you must have had an idea that you were creating something that was different, something... Yeah, I, I, thought, it was in, I thought it was quite interesting, I mean, still, <clears throat> it doesn't, just because it's created chaotically doesn't mean I don't think it's valuable, I think it's, I think it's you know, without trying to sound arrogant, I think, it, apart from a few terrible records I've made that generally speaking I've made some quite good things and think that paying is pretty good mm. so I think I've done some good good stuff but um, it's not it's just my method is just a little bit more um, haphazard than, mm. than some but um, yeah I still think it's, it's it's a value it's not like I'm trying to devalue it because it's it's created in a chaotic way mm. I could probably be joking actually have this master plan written down. <laughs> yeah, could, yeah. But, but um, we'd, never, we'd never know, would we? No, you wouldn't. Not unless you came to my house and see it plastered all over the walls, <laughs> written in my own blood. <laughs> With a goblin in the corner. Yeah. Have you seen that film Seven about that guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like that. <laughs> shall, we, shall we take some questions from. The room. If anyone's so, got any. So, yeah, no, I'm sure that there's gentlemen. There's one over there. there. I, definitely. Um, <laughs> I went to a night of yours, Sleuth, in Manchester yeah. in Yeah. Was that your first and only residency? And how in, was that? In Manchester? Yeah. No, I started, the first thing I started was a thing called Spice with a guy called Greg Fenton, which was in 1989, 90. Which was a Sunday night kind of Blairic thing, and then I did a club called Most Excellent, uh, and then and Sleuth was a, a, a techno incarnation in, in the mid nineties. Yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't the first residency in, in Manchester, no. But um, I think it was one of the well, no, there were a few good techno clubs in Manchester. So yeah, it was. Just, but now it's at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it gets fairly hazy my recollection. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah cause bug, but Bugged Out was slight, was that about the same time? I don't know. Bugged Out was down at uh, Sankey. Yeah, same time. Yeah, it was, uh, well, Sleuths and Paradise Factory, and that was yeah. uh, quite a 
Why? So why I went to the one night and then it finished about two nights, two nights after that. <laughs> 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 So that oh, chaos thing we were talking about earlier yeah. on. No, but Sleuth was, um, was our yeah, techno uh, thing, and he had like Richie Horton, Laurent Garnier, uh, Andrew Everall, and techno stuff downstairs, and then we had like Chemical Brothers upstairs, mm. playing like you know, all sorts of kind of fairly uh, eclectic kind of thing upstairs as well. So it was great, really good. Except that nothing ever worked there. You used to turn up to the club and like the sound technician was going, there's no crossfader. Uh, okay, and there's only one channel. Um, <laughs> Richie Horton's on it in a minute. Do you think he's? Uh, well, he'll have to make do with so it. Sort of <laughs> and he did. He took it. He took it well. <laughs> he did take it well. He, 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 he doesn't work. Right <laughs> so he's just going to put records on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's how it went. He made do. Fair play. He was happy. Fair play, Richie Horton. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> but nothing ever worked in, in Sleuth. It's it it amazing that we kept going. Yeah. Right. I like I like the idea of stuff not working. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's a little difficult. It should, night it should be working. Well, you know. It but it's like staying that to nine hundred kids on it. Yeah. <laughs> Stick a generator in the middle of the floor, blindfold them. You'll mm -hmm. never know the difference. <laughs> There's a gentleman over the back. Yeah. Some of them, yeah. Yeah. That's my wife on the horse up there. Yeah. No, it is, no, it's my wife on the horse. <laughs> That's the only one I'll tell you. Well, <laughs> this part can be edited out. See me afterwards. No, I, I, um, just the one, yeah, just the one. <laughs> They're all me. <laughs> Configurations of self. That's it.